And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. In St. John chapter 1 and verse about 10, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh. God was manifest in the flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. The Bible said Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. We want to welcome you once more to a program here today. And glad again the Lord's allowed us to get to be with you here over this program. And we want to dedicate it now to all of God's people everywhere. And the subject I'm speaking on is concerning the beast that ascends out of the earth. And truly that beast that's working up in our day is the same power and authority that was a working under the days of Daniel. Now, we're in this last days that we need to understand these things and be prepared for the things that's coming up on us. But God is faithful now, and we'll take care of His children. But what I want you to hear today, we're speaking out of the 8th chapter of the book of Daniel. And I'm speaking concerning the image that Nebuchadnezzar had seen. And Daniel interpreted it, and the first head of it was Nebuchadnezzar, the fine gold. And then the Medio Persian, you can read this in history, immediately took the kingdom from Nebuchadnezzar's son. And then there was the ruling power of that day. But there was another beast arising up that was to smote with choler against the Medio Persian and take it from them. And that's what we're reading about now is Daniel chapter 8 about the realm and the he-goat. Now read it all when you get time, but I'm going to drop down to the interpretation of it. And this realm now had a great notable horn, or the he-goat rather, and it smote that realm and broke the two horns. And I'm going to show you the two horns was representing the medio Persian. Now a lot of people think this is yet to be, but these things is been. But let's go now to Daniel 8 and listen to the interpretation. In verse 15, and it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Eulaia, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Isn't that amazing that Gabriel, the same angel that thousands of years later, or hundreds of years later, whatever it was, is the same angel that appeared unto Mary and Joseph and told them about the birth of the great stone or Jesus. See how God works? Now an angel can't die. And Gabriel has been since the beginning of time. He's the angel that stands in the presence of God. And then we have Michael, the great prince, and that's all representing Christ. But listen what he said. I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Eulaia, and it called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now he's not talking about the end time or my day. He's talking at the time that, that the medial Persian was to exist, that the Grecian Empire was to come in fulfilling God's word. Now, as he was speaking, Daniel said, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. But he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make known what shall be the last end of the indignation for at the time appointed, the end shall be. That's not talking about the end of the world. He's talking about the fulfilling of this prophecy. 
Watch this now. Read verse 20. The realm which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media Persia. See, didn't Daniel interpret the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and the head of it was who? Babylon. Then after that, an, another kingdom inferior, which was the Medio persian kingdom. That is the realm that had the two horns and one was higher because the Medes was ruling. All right, look here now. And the rough goat, which is the he goat, is the first king of Grecia. Now look in your history. Alexander the Great was the king of Grecia and he was a, a very angered type of man and he wanted to devour everything in front of him and he did. He took the kingdom from Medio Persia and not only that, but he wanted to destroy everything in front of him. And I believe history teaches that he died at a young age. He was an alcoholic, I believe. And the Bible said that the rough goat is the king of Grecia and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king, which is Alexander. Now look at this, verse 22, goes right along with history. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. See, there would be four generals after the death of Alexander that would rise up and rule, but not in the power of Alexander because he was dead. But then there was another horn that had his eye on him, and that was your little horn or the fourth beast beginning to raise up. And the Bible said here, listen to this. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, out of Greece, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance, and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his policy shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many." He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he'll be broken without hand. See, he's messing with Jesus now. And the vision in the evening of the morning, which is told is true. So we see in Daniel 2, the first head was the uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Then the Medio Persian, they come into rule. And then there followed the Grecian. Macedonian Empire under Alexander. And then we're coming now to the fourth beast. And you read Daniel 2 here. Look at this again. In the book of Daniel chapter 2, and this is the same fourth beast that had to stand up, which was Rome. And look at its description in verse 40 of Daniel 2. For as much as the arm breaks in pieces, see, and whereas thou sawest the feet part of potter's clay, and part of on it had ten toes, see? Now, does that describe just exactly like Daniel chapter 7? So what was that beast of Daniel 7? Let's find out. The fourth beast. In the book of Daniel chapter 7, look at this. Verse 7. After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly, and it had great orange teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces, stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the other beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. See, isn't that just like Daniel 2? Well, that's your fourth beast, which is in the Roman Empire day. All right? And there was a part of that beast now that was of clay. And I don't have time to go into all this, but I've mentioned it to you before. If you'll read Jeremiah, God represented the Jews or the Judean kingdom as the clay. Remember, Jeremiah had to go down to the potter's house and God told him to watch that old potter and that old potter was a mold and he didn't like it, so he made it into another vessel. And God told Israel, couldn't I do to you as the potter with this clay See, the clay is represented as the Jews, and the arm that had the most strength was the Roman Empire. And then we find in the days of these kings, 
that God was going to set up a kingdom that would never be destroyed. What happened? There was a little stone that was cut out of the mountain. The mountain is the power of God. Without hands, no human tools, cut out of the mountain without hand, and that stone was going to smoke that image of iron and clay upon its feet. Listen to me. Who was that stone? That was Jesus. And let me show you something. I believe it's in the book of Luke, and I want to show you when Jesus was born. And this all flows right together with these good scriptures that Daniel's interpreting. And listen to what the Bible said. And you read it all when you get time, but I'm going to show you that Jesus was born, all right, in chapter 2 of the book of Luke. And listen to verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. Look at this now. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto a city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Now look at that. Did the Bible say in the days of Augustus Caesar, Mary and Joseph were going to Bethlehem to be taxed? All right, did the Bible say in the days of these kings, what kings? The Roman Empire and the Judean kingdom. God was going to set up a kingdom and the stone had to be cut out of the mountain without hands. That was the birth of Jesus. He was that stone how was he cut out of the mountain without hands? In John 1, the Bible said he was born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, Jesus was cut out without hands. meant no human conception, but the Holy Ghost overshadowed that little virgin Mary, and she brought forth this child. Isn't that amazing that he was born in the days of the Caesars, and Herod's a ruling, and Herod was the red dragon of Revelation 12, and Jesus was the stone that Daniel seen in the time of the fourth beast. Ladies and gentlemen, they're teaching to you that the stone is yet to smoke that image, but God help us to recognize the stone's already smoked that image upon its feet that was of iron and clay. That's why Jesus had to be the first to bind the old devil or the strong man, and spoil his goods. You see now what the world's teaching has already been. I'm not going to tell you that he's yet to set up a kingdom. Why did Jesus go about the land teaching that the kingdom of God is at hand? And then remember in the book of Luke, I believe the 17th chapter, when Jesus was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come. See, we got them today, still don't believe it. But the Bible said that Jesus was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come. And Jesus said the kingdom of God comes not with observation. See? Neither shall they say lo here or there. For behold the kingdom of God is within you. You see what I'm saying church? We're going to have to understand these things. The world's telling you that the stone is yet to set up that kingdom. But people you better not believe that. Jesus set up his kingdom on the day of Pentecost and it took his suffering on earth to smoke the beast and he began to smite it upon its feet by his death and his resurrection. And then the stone become a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Didn't Jesus say, Now shall the prince of this world be cast out? See, he was bringing that power down which was ruling power of the world. And he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'm going to draw all men unto me. So you see how amazing it is to know we got a God today that's got a kingdom and you can be in that kingdom. Now, will you please notice this here in the book of Romans chapter 14. If you got a Bible, turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 14. Because Daniel said in the days of them kings, God would set up a kingdom. Well, let's find out what kingdom God has anyway. Everybody turn to Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, 
but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Is that what Jesus said? Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. See, Jesus told Nicodemus, remember, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. How could you enter that kingdom if it wasn't here? Why would Jesus tell Nicodemus that you must be born again to enter that kingdom? Now, I know there's a real heaven up there, and, and that God's got his new Jerusalem up there, but brother, he set the kingdom of God up on this earth, and it started on the day of Pentecost. And you're going to have to be born into that kingdom. See, it takes a spirit. And Paul said it's not meat, it's not drink, it's not all of these things, but it's righteousness and peace and joy, thank God, in the Holy Ghost. So if you don't have that Holy Ghost today, you're not a part of God's kingdom. All right, look here. It'll show you again in the book of Hebrews. You need to search these things out. It'll help us out. In the book of Hebrews, everybody, I want to show you something here about the 12th chapter, I believe it is. Look, listen to what he said here. In the book of Hebrews, let me just find it right quick. Chapter, I believe it's 12. Chapter 12 and verse 22. Hebrews 12, verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and into the innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, thank God, and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And listen to this, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant. All right, drop down to verse 28. Wherefore, we receiving, have you received it? We receiving a what? A kingdom which cannot be shaken. Is the kingdom of God here today? Honey, they're saying no, but the Bible says yes it is. Listen to Revelation chapter 1 to old John here. Everybody in verse 9 of Revelation 1. John said, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Were they in the kingdom? Honey, Jesus was demanded of the Pharisees. They thought that the kingdom of God was going to immediately appear. And it would be some big place where God would just rule the world's teaching you the same thing as the Pharisees did. But what did Jesus say? He said the kingdom of God comes not with observation, which means the things that you can see because they're temporal. But what did he say? For lo, the kingdom of God is within you. It was going to be a kingdom that would put people into it by the Holy Ghost. We're on the earth today, but so is Jesus. You see what I'm saying? They're teaching to you that he's going to come down here and fulfill Daniel 2. Ladies and gentlemen, read your Bible. Know these things because Jesus is that stone. And in Isaiah 28, he said, I lay in Zion for a foundation. Thank God a stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Jesus is already laid in Zion and the stone became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And that's why people today can be born into God's kingdom. Now, I know there are a lot telling you it's not the church. But folks, if you get any peace and righteousness and joy, you're going to have to get it out of the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is already here. So when you get time to study these things out, because that beast of Revelation 13 and also of Daniel 7 and Daniel 2, that's the same beast. But I want to show you now, and remember, the beast like a lion was Nebuchadnezzar, the first king. King of beasts is like a lion, okay? The next was the leopard that had the four heads, which was the, or the leopard was the Grecodonian empire, and the four heads was the four generals of Alexander. And then we had the leopard, we had the bear, which represented the Medio Persians and so forth. Now these things is done then, but they had to be a wound put upon that beast. Didn't the Bible say in Daniel 2 that the stone, Jesus, smote that image 
He's the one that put the deadly wound on it. How? By smiting it in the feet that was of iron and clay. He tore down that power. That's why he said that my kingdom's not of this world, see? If it was, his servants would fight, but he was going to set up a different kingdom. But Jesus is the one that had to smoke that image upon its feet that was of iron and clay and then set up his own kingdom. So, listen to Daniel 13 again. And I'm going to show you there's a healing coming back, though, as far as for world rule. Okay? He said here in Daniel 2, or Daniel 13, verse 2, The beast which I saw was like to a leopard, feet as the feet of a bear, mouth as the mouth of a lion, that's your Nebuchadnezzar, your uh, Medio persian your Grecodonian, and fourth beast, so forth. And the dragon gave him his power, strength, and great authority. And then he said, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. So when, when did Jesus smoke the image? In the days of the Roman Empire. But do you know that power is going to be resurrected back? And the deadly wound of this beast must be healed. And she's surely a working now in our day. And John said, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. What happened? And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And the Bible said power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, which is three years and a half. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to do what? To blaspheme his name. Well, do we even know what the name of our God is? Jesus said in St. John 5, 43, I am come in my Father's name. So his name's the one that's being persecuted. And the Bible said that he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And the Bible said power was given unto him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And then the Bible said, All that dwell upon the earth to worship him, whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now listen to uh, John here. If any man have ears, let him hear. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. That's why you're seeing so much violence in the land. They're just killing each other. You're seeing nation against nation, little kingdoms against kingdom, and all of these things leading into captivity. Honey, but the Bible said here is the patience and the faith of the saints. They're not to kill, see? They're not to take anybody captive. God's people don't learn war anymore. All right, but what, what did he say here? I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke as a dragon. You see, this deadly wound of the first beast is being healed, but there's another beast that rose out of the earth having two horns, what? Like a lamb, but he spoke as a dragon. Do you know that fits America perfect? That we're a nation that... Is like a lamb as far as religious, as far as trying to do things in the name of God and so forth, but speak like a dragon. In other words, powerful. Is there a nation that's like us? Not too many. And watch what happened. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, in the time before Jesus died, the world was under the one world ruling power of the Caesars in their days. Okay? The United States and its allies and the countries today is all pushing toward a world order. There wanting to be a one ruling power to come back into force that can take care of the nations. We're seeing the deadly wound of this beast coming back into effect. And don't believe it or not, but the United States is more a pushing toward that power.
to heal the wound of the beast, to bring authority and death and power back to one ruling than just about any nation. And of course, we got our allies standing by us, the UN, different nations. But the Bible said here that they want to make an image to the first beast that had the deadly wound and wounded healed. And what would this beast here like a, a lamb do? He doeth great wonders so that he makes far come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Now that's not talking about some man just standing up here and actually pulling far down. Honey, I believe America and its allies is showing the world right now a nuclear power and an armored power that we have that nothing much can stand against it. We're seeing the word of God being fulfilled now more than I've ever seen it before. Nations are lifting up against nation. They're crying out peace and safety. They're pushing for a world ruling system. And folks, it's getting wicked, wiser, and imaginations of men heart is just getting nothing but filthy anymore. And it's going to take God to watch over His people. Because church, something you need to understand, we're facing this power. And the church of Jesus Christ, the real body of Christ, will not leave the earth till after these days. But Jesus will watch over us. But now I want you to listen to this. The Bible said he doeth great wonders so that he makes far come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. That ain't talking about healing or casting out devils. What's that talking about? Honey, we've got nations today that is so powerful in nuclear equipment and with all the technology we got today, they're doing miracles for the world. I mean, look at the trouble in Iraq, how that we stood up with great technical power and we stood the nation, see? And not only that, but they're coming together in government and the leading powers is all leaning toward a one rule. So stay with me. I'm going to be speaking more on this subject, but folks, we need to get prepared because I believe the day of the Lord's overtaken this earth and His wrath's being poured out. So stay with me and be sure now to watch these programs every time they're on because we're trying to keep it into unity. Till I see you again, God bless you as a prayer. We'd like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in this outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to Church of Jesus Christ, P.O. Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky, 40806. May God bless you.